Destiny 2's Glacioclasm is back and the perk pool has been updated for this year's dawning event. Double accuracy perks over shields, explosions with 50% extra damage, and even a roll that lets you max out stability and range at the same time. There are a ton of new options, but are any of them worth grinding all that extra dawning essence for? You've most likely got a great high impact fusion rifle already sitting in your vault. I believe the new Glacioclasm does have something unique to offer, but maybe it's not in the area you think it is. Glacioclasm's stats haven't changed with this new season, and that's not a bad thing. It is best in class for nearly every stat that matters on a fusion rifle, including its zoom at 16, which is fantastic. Every other high impact fusion rifle that is currently available maxes out at 15 zoom. As I talked about in my rangefinder nerf breakdown, zoom isn't as important as it once was on fusion rifles, but fortunately Glacioclasm also has the best in class range at 63 and stability at 29. That is kind of wild, to have the highest range, stability, and zoom out of a whole class of fusion rifles. You'd think this thing was made for mapping. Now it does take home one big negative in the stats department, and it's a big one. Aim Assist. Glacioclasm's 55 Aim Assist is the lowest of any high impact fusion rifle in Destiny. It does have a few perks we'll talk about that can help that number, but it's also missing a perk that could have made it the king of deep range shots. If stats were all that mattered, Glacio might take home the prize by default, even with its low aim assist number. But that's not all we work with in Destiny 2. Perks are the primary thing that push a weapon beyond its peers, and as I hinted at in the intro, Glacio has a lot of interesting perks for a fusion rifle. Before we get into the new ones, I want to acknowledge that we have lost quite a few old perks in this new Glacioclasm iteration. Backup plan is a big one that sticks out to me, as backup plan on high impacts is actually pretty good since high impacts already take 4 bolts to take down a 10 resil guardian, and backup plan just makes the weapon a consistent 4 bolt to kill across the board at any Brazil. You're just doing it at a much faster rate with backup plan. I'm not too disappointed to see it go as we have so many other options with it now, think the King's Fall Midas Reckoning or the Iron Banner Wise and Rebuke, so in a way it's nice to see them focus on other characteristics for the weapon. That said, I do feel the loss of not having Demolitionist anymore because it would have had some great synergy with the new ability-centric perk, Repulsor Brace. Repulsor Brace gives you a 45 HP overshield when you kill an opponent that was debuffed by a void element in some way, so if they were weak and volatile or suppressed. And the main way we get a target weak and volatile or suppressed is by using a grenade, so Demolitionist would have been awesome here. 20% of our grenade energy back on a kill and Repulsor Brace would have given us an overshield at the same time. Then when we need to debuff a target again and throw another grenade, our Glacioclasm would automatically refill from Demolitionist 2. Would have been amazing, but okay, enough dreaming. What can we actually do with Glacio? Golden Tricorn, Eye of the Storm, Kickstart, Shot Swap, and Offhand Strike are all new perks we have to play around with. Let's start with Repulsor Brace while we're there. The main thing that stands out to me here is the Jerfalcons rework. There aren't too many weapons out there with Repulsor Brace, and anyone running Jerfalcons is going to want it because you now get Volatile Rounds for free. Volatile Rounds procs Repulsor Brace on kills, which gives you that 45 HP overshield. Legit. Now, does it work in practice? In PvP? On a hard-hitting special weapon, it's not great. It just wouldn't proc that frequently on the kill. I'm not sure if it's connections or just the speed at which the fusion rifle gets the kill before it registers the opponent as volatile, but it is much more reliable using a primary with Repulsor Brace if you want to proc that overshield. We'll get to some cool setups for PvP in a moment, but in PvE, Repulsor Brace is a different story. Repulsor Brace and Jerfalcon's Habert goes off with Glacioclasm, continually blowing stuff up with volatile rounds and getting your shield back. The fun doesn't end with Hunter either, as you can run this on Titan or Warlocks too, if you've got a build with good grenade synergy. It's just more frequently available with a Hunter running Jerfalcon's. Now, there are two things that pair with Repulsor Brace really well for PvE. Reservoir Burst will probably be the go-to for most, as the top of the mag will cause another explosion with your Volatile Rounds explosion, and you'll have 25% more damage on your fusion shot. That's pretty awesome. At first, I thought this might be overkill, since everything is usually dead from Volatile Rounds explosion alone, but don't forget about that extra 25% damage on your Reservoir Burst shots. That could help a ton at hiring content to do more damage with your bolts and still get the extra damage from Volatile Rounds Explosion, even if you don't get the Reservoir Burst Explosion too. 
To expand on that real quick, volatile rounds will still explode if they reach a certain amount of damage. You don't actually have to get a kill with it. So the double explosion and overshield roll is pretty cool. But there's another option I think I still prefer more for PvE, and that's Repulsor Brace and Golden Tricorn. Golden Tricorn can get us that 50% damage buff and still stacks on Font of My debuffs and Empowering buffs. So that's a ton of damage, and when you get a kill while a target is debuffed, you'll also get that overshield for some quick safety. This might be my favorite role in PvE just due to the utility of taking out bulky yellow bars once I've got everything stacked. It just felt the most satisfying. It wasn't what I thought I would love the most though. On paper, the one I thought I'd really like was stacking Subsistence and Reservoir Burst or Golden Tricorn. Subsistence with Reservoir Burst was available last year and makes the most sense because it keeps your magazine at the top so you can continually proc Reservoir Burst. If you're running your Falcons and Silas Executioner on 100 with this build, you're also going in Viz every time you get a kill. So all together, with every shot you're doing 25% more damage from Reservoir Burst, doing double explosions from Volatile Rounds and Reservoir Burst together, going in Viz from Stylus Executioner, and reloading your magazine from Subsistence to do it all over again. It's fun, it's amazing, but it lacks one thing. Ammunition. You just don't get a ton of extra reserve ammo to use it with, and I often found myself wishing I was using my seasonal machine gun with volatile rounds or my new Volt Shot Trace Rifle. Subsistence with Golden Tricorn struggle with the same thing. It's amazing to get it going, but you just run out of ammo really fast. On top of that, Subsistence felt like a waste with Golden Tricorn that's meant for big target damage and not ad clear, so I wasn't proccing Subsistence very frequently. All these reasons together is how I landed on Repulsor Brace and Golden Tricorn as my final PvE god roll for Glacioclasm. Overshields and big damage, but in a short burst for the limited amount of ammo we have to work with. For PvP, I see four ways to run this. The first being a unique combo that's only been seen on one other fusion rifle, Under Pressure and Eye of the Storm. We've seen this combo before on Dream Breaker, and if you're a fan of that gun, it's worth trying out, but personally, I'm not as big of a fan of the weapon, and Eye of the Storm suits Glacioclasm much better. Eye of the Storm activates as your health gets lower, and it max grants up to plus 30 handling, minus 40% accuracy cone size, and minus 17% accuracy cone growth. A few things here. First, Glacioclasm is a high impact that takes a while to charge. You are frequently going to get shot at during this time, and so Eye of the Storm will proc to some degree. So that's why it's huge that we're getting it on a high impact and not just seeing it on Dream Breaker, an adaptive fusion rifle. Secondly, the benefits from Eye of the Storm are immense. Hand cannon users love it for a reason. Minus 40% accuracy cone size is a huge bonus on its own. And the minus 17% accuracy cone growth is going to help you keep that narrow accuracy cone even as the bolts come out of the fusion rifle. I want to point out that not many accuracy perks do this. They don't often give any changes to your accuracy cone growth, so this is big. On top of that, you'll already have up to 50% increased accuracy and up to plus 30 stability from under pressure. So two accuracy perks working together to help all your bolts connect. Now, time to bust the bubble. I'm, I'm sorry. Hear me out on this one. It doesn't matter how accurate your fusion bolts are if you're not getting the one hit kill. You are charging this thing for so long, you better get the job done. The problem is, even with the highest zoom, and the highest range available on a high impact fusion rifle, your damage fall off still maxes out at about 18 meters. Soon after that, the bolt's damage is cut in half, 33 a bolt, and even if all five bolts hit, you are only doing 165 damage. There are more PvP combos, but let's think about this range thing real quick. My Precision Frame Rangefinder Epicurean hits up to 19 meters before damage drop off, charges faster, and is super consistent. My Burden of Guilt hits up to 17 meters, even faster, allowing you to take on incoming shotgunners or get off two whole bursts before Glacioclasm can even fire. So the question is, what is the point of a ridiculously accurate high impact fusion rifle if the damage fall off can't get you that one hit kill at a further distance? I think the answer isn't as simple as some like to make it. People like to say it's trash or it's hot, and I think it comes down to the player. This weapon is for players who love pre-charging their high impact fusion rifles and guaranteeing that kill within their 18 meters. They like to keep their distance from enemy players and use their movement or abilities to accommodate that. There is a place for it. It's not the play style I like to use, but there are people who love high impact fusion rifles, and if you do, this double accuracy perk Glacioclasm could be for you. And there's more. 
You've already got the highest zoom, range, and stability stats, so if you decide to go with Kickstart for boosted speed and damage, you could double down with Accelerated Coils and Charge Time Masterwork and still be able to 3-bolt kill any Guardian at any resilience level. You've even got Slide Shot to pair with it, which reloads your ammo and bumps you plus 20 range and plus 30 stability. Remember that it will technically be only plus 10 stability once you've got that negative 20 stability sliding penalty that Bungie put in a while ago, but it's still a net positive if you go with that aggressive kickstart playstyle. Now, if you didn't care about speed at all and you just want to max your stats as much as possible, you put your masterwork battery and barrel into stability, rely on fragile focus for a plus 20 range boost, and a slide shot for another plus 20 range and plus 30 stability, so with this combo, you might be able to keep it active long enough to not incur the negative 20 stability sliding penalty. I'm not 100% this is true, there's no way to really see, but if so, your final stat spread with all the perks active would end at 100 range and 89 stability. Those are insane numbers for a high impact fusion rifle. Even if you don't want to risk the slide shot bonus, you could use the same setup with under pressure in the third column. On your last shot, you'd still have the same 89 stability and 83 range with all the perks active, plus a massive accuracy boost from under pressure. It'd be easy to rearrange your first few columns to end up with 100 range and keep up to 69 stability as well. Just depends on how you want to play it. Personally, I like this option better than the max stat slide shot one, since that one's super dependent on all the perks activating at the same time. But my favorite roll I used, and makes the most sense on paper too, is to grab a roll with a charge time masterwork that has high impact reserves. This lets you fire Glacioclasm a little bit faster with the charge time, and maintain a 3 volt kill, even up to 10 resil, all thanks to high impact reserves putting in some extra damage. I played around with different barrels and different recoil directions, various stability and range boosts, but ultimately, all the Glacioclasms felt relatively the same in a real Trials of Osiris game. There was one game, I mapped someone from stairs all the way into the library this past weekend, and I was like, man, what role is this? Turns out, I had kept one of my PvE rolls on I was testing, and it didn't have any extra range or stability at all. It was just a base level Glacioclasm, so you don't need much else. That makes me want to push the damage fall off as much as possible with extended barrel and projection fuse, keep that charge time masterwork since I got high impact reserves and then use under pressure for a little extra accuracy. That is my final recommendation for my personal god roll Glacioclasm. I don't see much use in killing win here since follow up shots are so slow, I just want that initial one to hit. Offhand strike doesn't interest me because I'm not going to be hit firing this thing, no way I get that shot off if I'm pinched between enemies, and harmony isn't enough damage to really make a difference on this gun unless I'm stacking it with an empowering buff. Like I said, these are just my personal recommendations, and I say that because everyone plays this game different. What works for one may not work for others, and what doesn't work for one may be the perfect feel for someone else. Let me know if any of these combos stood out for you. Excited to talk about crafting these seasonal weapons soon. Until next time, GG.